So uh, today I want to talk about the, uh, the power family, who are probably better known as the wise powers. And, um, and nobody seems to know why they call themselves the wise powers. Um, and they came from Knockhouse, which is out just outside Waterford. If you keep going out, the old Kilmeaden Road is on the right-hand side, very close to the sports complex in Carriganore. And they, um, they had a large family. They were basically um, James Power and Catherine Wise. They were the, the, the couple that got married, and they had 10 children, and one died young. And three of the family we're going to talk about today is uh, Tom, uh, John, uh, and Kite, and sorry, uh, four Annie. Uh, but basically, they, they were a very Republican family. Um, I remember talking to um, Julie Richardson from Tremor, and she told me that she remembers going to the farmhouse, and there was a very large picture of Parnell up on the wall and next to the Sacred Heart, that he was held in such high esteem by the family. And Parnell seems to be very big in their, in their family, uh, in their memory, because um, he comes into their story a lot. But basically, the reason why I want to talk about them is that not many people know that the Metropole Hotel was owned by a Tom Power and he's one of the family. Tom died quite young. He was only 39 years of age when he died. But his wife, uh, Leticia, and their three daughters carried on the business. Um, and they are referred to quite a lot in the military archives. Because, now, for people that don't know about the military archives, the military archives was um, a, a fantastic resource created in the 1940s. Um, and by Oscar Trainer, he was a he was a TD a minister in the Irish government, and he decided to interview anyone that was involved in the revolution revolutionary period 1916 up to 1922, and he interviewed he organised through the civil service that people all over Ireland were interviewed, people that were involved in coming them on, people that were involved in the IRA, and but they're all interviewed with with the one condition that it would never be released until they were all dead. Because if you can understand the, 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 the feelings of people during the uh, Civil War were so, there was so much anger and so much hatred during that period that they didn't want to reignite problems in the 1940s. So that was the agreement they said to everybody, look, we're going to interview you all but we won't release it until you're all dead. And then, it was only about 10 years ago that these archives were released. And they're known as the military archives. And, um, and they're online for you to read. And I would really recommend, if you're interested in history, check them out. But if you go through the military archives and you put in Watford, you will find that the Metropole Hotel comes into an awful lot of stories. So, for example, in 1918, when the, uh, during the Sinn Féin, uh, the famous uh, election where Sinn Féin were up against Redmond in Watford, um, Sinn Féin based themselves in the Metropole Hotel. <laughs> so all of their volunteers that travelled from around Munster came to Watford to protect uh, campaigners and all that kind of thing. They all stationed themselves in the Metropole Hotel. Um, the, any of the kind of meetings coming up to 1916 uh, where people were coming down with messages to give to the local IRA, all the meetings happened in the Metropolitan. And the reason for that was that the, the powers that owned the hotel, they were extremely Republican family. Um, because when you go back to Parnell and you go back to their, their background, they, that's where they were extremely you know, uh, that's what they believed in, and they, they lived um, through their ideals. Now, they're referred to in the military archives as the power girls, or the power, uh, the power um, family, but they don't really go into details about who did what. So, for example, there was three girls, 
there was uh, Letitia, Catherine, and um, Mary Agnes. But they, they of, often don't mention which of them was involved or which, which of them did whatever. Uh, they just refer to them as the power guards. And we only have one photograph for, of um, one of the girls, and that was taken in the pool collection. And it shows, we think, Letitia. Um, now, Letitia went on to, to marry um, Sean Lane, who was a principal of Waterford College of, well, now it's called Waterford College of Further Education. At that time, it was Central Tech. And Sean Lane himself is a very interesting fellow. He uh, had been interned a couple of times in Ireland. He was a very Republican. And then the other uh, sister, um, which is Catherine, she married Eamon Enright, who was a Kerry man, and he is, again, a very famous Republican. Um, so you can see that the family, that whole kind of Republican thing went on into the next generation, etc. Now, Tom Power, who was uh, from the Wise Powers, as we call him, his older brother John was probably, uh, probably one of the most famous persons that came out of Waterford at that time. He, um, he was one of the founders of the GAA. He uh, was invited to a famous meeting in Tipperary um, and with uh, Cusack, and they, they, he was one of the seven people for that meeting. And he basically, again, he was involved with the, the Land League movement, which was uh, Parnell's uh, great agitation against um, landlords. And he found himself in a prison up in County Wicklow, and that's where he met his wife, which is Jenny, Jenny O'Toole, who became Jenny Wise Power. And Jenny actually became more famous than John Wise Power because she went on to help form Sinn Féin. She also was the founder member of Coming to Mon in Ireland. And in their house, they, they had this, these series of shops in Dublin called the Irish Farm Produce Company. And in their house in Henry Street was where the proclamation was signed for 1916. So basically all of the people who were executed in 1916, they came to their shop. Their shop was very famous because it was like people coming and going all day. And even though the, the British um, uh, police were watching the place all the time, it was very hard to keep track because there was a number of entrances. There was a cafe and there was a shop and there was a lot of different meeting rooms in it. So it was very hard to keep, to keep track of what was going on there. But anyway, the, all the signatures of 1916, they, they, they signed the proclamation in their shop. And during the actual, it was in Henry Street, which is just around the corner from the GPO. And obviously, during the uh, 1916 um, uh, 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 uprising, their shop, as well as all of Henry Street, was devastated with the bombings. Um, and uh, so an awful lot of stuff was lost. But uh, John Wise Power, he was basically, after he was incarcerated in Wicklow, he, he, he basically worked as a journalist, and he... Uh, worked for a lot of different newspapers. Um, and he um, was very interesting because even when he was founded the GA, he left the GA after about five years, because, or sorry, more than five years, but he was the Dublin County Secretary and he left on principle because they decided to ban RIC players. And that was against, he, he felt that the uh, GA should be for everybody and that he didn't want kind of a kind of a sectarian thing coming into, um, into the GA. And so he left on principle. Um, now, John was a member of the IRB, which was like we say before Sinn Féin, before the IRA was, was called the IRB. And he was a very strong principled man. Um, and the other, the other person I wanted to mention was, you know, Annie, Annie another sister, and Coit, uh, Coit ended up working in the shops in Dublin as well. And she married Paddy O'Keefe. Paddy O'Keefe is a famous guy in Sinn Féin and very, very famous in that whole revolutionary period. He was a great friend of Arthur Griffith. He was a great friend of Michael Collins. Um, 
and he is uh, a, a really outspoken kind of uh, uh, Republican. He was originally from Kerry, and he was regularly locked up. Um, and the family, interesting enough, because of their connection with uh, Griffith and Michael Collins, the wise powers went with the idea of the treaty. And they obviously lost a lot of friends. Uh, but interestingly, Jenny Wise Power always stayed very close to um, um, Countess Markovich. Countess Markovich obviously was very much against the treaty, but the friendship continued right through that whole Civil War period, which is very interesting. Um, anyway, I just wanted to kind of let people know that that family came from Waterford and that they had a big involvement in that revolutionary period and we will probably find out more information about this family uh, in the next few years and we can add to this site. Thank you.